Well, thank you for joining us again. Uh, again, I'm here with James, and I am Chris, and today I'm going to talk to you about uh, what you did in college, which you've been graduated for a few years now, um, but in college you majored in physics? Yeah, I, I majored in physics, mm -hmm. and uh, I worked in a computational soft materials laboratory. Oh, that sounds so, very, very fancy. Uh, what, what we did is... Well, it, real question. Yeah, go ahead. Before that, I mean, I've known you for years, Yeah. and when I first met you, you didn't really seem to be a big computer nerd, right, yeah, I should yeah, say, yeah. Um, and since then I feel like you've completely surpassed me in many ways, <laughs> no. but you've done you've done it professionally, so you have more, I have a hack it together, just get it sure, done, yeah. or you've worked with other people, um, but was it in college when you were working with physics and doing computer simulations, yeah. was that when you really started getting into programming, and C in particular? Yeah, no, absolutely, um, I, I dabbled in programming before that, I think that I, and, you know, unfortunately, I never had something to really inspire me to get really deep into it. And so, yeah, in college, working in, in, in the laboratory was, was some, you know, all of a sudden I had projects that were, that were interesting problems. And that's why I, I majored in physics, is the, the thing I loved more than anything was solving problems. Is just being able to, like, break something apart and see, see what makes it tick. Right. Right? And so, you know, early on, I, I found, like, one of the most interesting modern-day ways to break something apart and see how it works is is with computational physics, where you have a computer actually either run simulations or compute compute answers to, to, to equations that are too complicated for someone to solve in a traditional sense. And C is ideal for that. Yes. Yeah, okay, well, I'm no, asking. It's, okay, yeah, it's debatable, you know. Um, so a lot of people still use Fortran, okay. which is the oldest computer language that there is. I mean, in the uh, beginning. Assem <laughs> there's essentially assembly, but other than that, in the beginning there was Fortran. I sure. mean, there is Fortran on punch cards. Okay, okay. You know, yeah. I now, mean, I've so. played around very little with assembly. I basically yeah. did a Hello World bootloader. Right. Um, but I've never touched Fortran, but I've heard you mention it a few times. Yeah, so, so Fortran's still used a lot in the scientific community. Um, it, it has a lot of mathematical uh, resources available to it, just, just out of the gate. Mm -hmm. which is kind of an advantage. I think uh, where C really kind of uh, gets used more than Fortran is probably for simulations. Again, still people use Fortran a lot for simulations, but for C, um, you have a little bit more control over optimizing memory space, mm -hmm. and um, the pointer mechanism makes it very, very strong way to sort of uh, connect objects, uh, and, and, and the type def functionality allows you to create uh, new objects similar to the way you would in an object-oriented programming language. So yeah, so C is used by a lot of, and C++ is used by a lot of uh, uh, physicists for simulation. Yes. But mainly, definitely with working with that sort of thing, physics, where you're calculating, you're crunching a whole bunch of numbers, yeah. you probably want a binary program yeah. rather than a scripting right, language. Right, yeah. And, and the, probably the most popular, uh, the third most popular language b besides those two is probably like the MATLAB slash Octave, and Octave's the open source version. And, um, and th those ones, especially if, if in a, I'm not taking away from any of those languages, but if you're working in a laboratory and you just need to crunch the data from that laboratory, in other words, all you're doing, it, it, you, you know, your instrument measured something and you want to find some, some result from those measurements, uh, Octave and MATLAB tend to work very good for that. Uh, you could run simulations on them, but typically by the time you're doing simulations, you're doing C or Fortran. Sure. Now, I, I remember, and this has been years ago, so my memory might not be quite right, but I remember uh, one of your first real experiences with Linux was probably in a class, I think you said you had, there was a, there was a room in the basement <laughs> that you went yeah. down and they had Red Hat running on all yeah. these old computers. Yeah, so, yeah, in the physics department, you, and you'll find this, actually, probably the oldest proponents of the Linux operating systems, besides, of course, the computer science people, mm -hmm. That, that historically have ha, had to rewrite open source versions of Unity systems, mm -hmm. but you know the people that Unity systems or Unix systems? Unix systems. Okay, sorry, yeah. Unix, so that's sorry. what I figured you meant. <laughs> Unix systems, uh, open source versions, but but you'll find a lot of the big proponents besides computer scientists and mathematicians were were physicists, chemists, other scientists uh, that that you know, they needed those sort of controls, they needed to have that much power and flexibility. Right, it's not like an office where you're filling out a spreadsheet or a Word right, document, yeah. you need to actually write stuff, yeah. and the tools are more there in a community where that's what people do. And you need to be able to, I mean, there, and there's a lot of things that, even just Linux aside, Unix operating systems can really specialize on a lot of things that, that really gave a lot of power to, um, uh, uh, you know, science uh, programmers who were, 
writing C programs just to be able to, to fork processes and, and, and or even to be able to pipe things. Mm -hmm. You know, the, even the bash scripting ability, it just makes it a lot easier to, to run things on your own system. Right. Um, and uh, I feel like you also told me once when you were working on those projects, there was a, a guy you worked with who was pretty good with bash or some sort of shell script and uh, wasn't very uh, knowledgeable on C and so he wrote a bash script to calculate some numbers and then decided that it was taking forever and let it keep running and before it finished running he learned how to write a C program uh, ran it and it calculated numbers and the, and the bash script and, and do you remember this? Yeah, or? yeah, no, I think even <laughs> I wouldn't even say he was not good at C I think what I think the, the story that was being told to me from them is when I was newer to the lab was that you know, you, you have to figure something out, and it's easy to write a bash script to figure something out, especially with awk. Awk mm -hmm. is very popular uh, to, to be able to compute some things. Right. And uh, you have to write a bash script, so you write a bash script and, uh, and, and you're waiting for it to run, but then you figure, well, why don't I write a C, uh, C script to do the same thing? And since it's a lower level programming language, it's closer to the source, it's able to use a lot, utilize the processor better, more efficiently and the memory more efficiently, right. and, and apparently they were able to run it it, write it and run it before the bash script finished. So, right. you know, that, that might mean something. Okay. So. Now I'm going to defend bash a little bit. Okay. Just <laughs> because a lot of my viewers are bash. And I completely understand yeah, that a, yeah. a binary language like C sure, sure. is um, way more efficient for that sort sure. of thing. Um, but uh, there was one time I was over here visiting you. And oh, we yeah, were having this yeah, conversation. Okay. Now <laughs> I know why you want to do these videos. Okay. Yeah, I'm see. not calling you out. Okay. And I'm just... Um, Trying to make a uh, uh, just. Show I think I won that argument, though. I think I think I think we determined Are we the same when story? we scaled it up. I think we figured <laughs> well, if we scaled it up. You said let, let's take something that has a lot of words in it yeah, and you were, count those word count. words. Word and count. so we decided to take the Old Testament of the Bible. Yeah. And you asked me to write a bash script. So just for my knowledge, I wrote out a bash script, and you said. This is we're going to put this script online, and I'm pretty sure we found... I already sure have it found, up on my paste, then. I'm pretty sure we well, found, like, I... Let, let me, yeah, let me okay, get, okay, I'll, okay. And I'll get to, to right, your, yeah. your, your... Okay, so, I wrote a bash script, and it was running on your computer, and we're talking, you're like, this is going to take a day. Ten minutes later, it was done. And you're like, wow, that was a lot faster than I thought, but yeah. C would still be faster. I sat down, tweaked the program, and got it to run in about three minutes. Yeah. Um... And then your argument when you saw my code yeah. was that I was using sort. I, I right, right, which and you is were probably like, running C. Yeah, oh. yeah, you're using sort. And, yeah. Okay, you sort. But no, I don't. Let, let me look okay, at yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> So with sort, you 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 went and you looked at the source code. Yeah. And you said it was um, hashing stuff, right? Sure. Like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Sure. And what you were thinking, I would have to write. Yeah, yeah. And so your argument was, well, this is written in C, and my argument was, well. <laughs> Everything's written in C. Any any scripting language, uh, Python, Bash, okay. is written in C. I am that. not bashing Bash. No, okay? I know you're not. And I'm, I'm not bashing C. Obviously, I'm I just... use Bash more than I probably use C. Right. So, you but know. my point, though, Let's is <laughs> is that you are 100% right that it's C. Sometimes, though, there's programs like Sort, which is already designed to accomplish a task, and I'm calling that. Now, when we're talking about the physics, there's probably not already a program written specifically because you're trying to do something somewhat unique. Well, and let's so, even just talk about the, the beautiful thing about um, Unix, the Unix philosophy, mm -hmm. is you write programs that do one thing well. Yes. Right? And I'm so, very much so, into that for 99% so, of projects. And all Bash is doing is it's, it's able to utilize how wonderfully Unix does that, mm -hmm. right? So we, we have this, this, this function that someone wrote, and, and it's not supposed to be Excel where it can do everything under the sun right. with tables. All it does is sort. Mm -hmm. And it is r written to really sort well. Right. And then you can pipe things to it, and you can take the result and pipe it somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty of Bash and, and yeah. Unix systems. Yes. Yeah. And I, I wonder, if, like I said, 90-something 90, 90 percent of the time, I would say, one goal, get that done. And that's one of the things that um, I try to express to some of my viewers, and I say this a lot, and I get a lot of people arguing with me, and a lot of people agreeing with me, and I think sure. that we'll probably touch on this in the next video, maybe it'll be the topic, <laughs> yeah, right. is that... Get ambushed again. No, 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 not <laughs> ambush. Um, programming is not difficult. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah no. It becomes difficult when people try to do too many things at once. Oh yeah, definitely. And actually, I think that we're going to end this segment here.
and next segment will probably be on that topic. Okay, so sounds great. To you. Yeah. So, thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description. Thank you again, James, for talking to me today, and I hope that you all have a great day. If you enjoy my tutorials and would like to see more, please think about contributing to my Patreon account at patreon.com forward slash metalx1000.